I, I adjusted this bolt here, and I adjusted this adjuster for the for the switch that triggers the brake light. But you've got to adjust both of these to get this position. What I found is you want this brake to be a little bit, almost a little bit less than level with the foot peg, so that when you're riding, you just bring your foot over and hit it down. It should be down below the level of the foot peg. So you bring your foot over and hit it down. That's for city driving. For off-road riding, if you guys can comment what's the position of the brake. Normally I think you would have big boots on and you'd be riding like this. Uh, this is the position I'm in so you can hit the rear brake, but I think normally when you're riding off-road, I'm not really sure what the best position would be for that. I think it might be this way, but if you guys can comment, let me know. With a big pair of boots on, you wouldn't want to be accidentally triggering your rear brake. And you don't necessarily need to spot the rear brake when you're off-roading. So, it'd be interesting to know. Hey, what's up, everybody? Bronx now. Yeah, so I was I wanted to do a video about combo braking, like if you can learn how I learned and what you can learn from it. What I noticed in the city is you gotta be on top of your braking. I say braking, I mean combo braking. You gotta learn the combo um, braking where you where you know how to press your front and rear brake at the same time to get the optimal braking that you're looking for. Because you know when you're in the city driving, if something cuts in your way. You gotta be able to, to, to brake without losing that front wheel. Like you may not have the option to brake very quickly. If you brake too quickly on the front, you might lose the front wheel. That happens a lot. Matter of fact, it's happened to me. I mean, you learn your lesson from it, uh, but on the wrong bike, it can be pretty bad. It happened to me on the KLR one time. And I lost the front wheel. Like for example, in here when you're when you're splitting, if you have your combo breaking down, you you know you protect yourself. Thank you. Thanks.
Like there, I just did a little bit of combo braking. With my front and rear. You can learn that it's, a, it's really really priceless in New York. It'll save you because one time I was on 3rd Avenue and a cab came over on me like literally like here like that where that Audi is. He just came over on me very suddenly. And uh, when he came over I just grabbed a whole bunch of front brake because I, I was trying to turn away from him at the same time as when he when he cut me. lost the front wheel and then the, the KLR went down side you know low side and uh, I just let it go let it go and it slid into a lamppost and uh, the gas tank got totaled but the whole thing was just a mess like it scared some woman standing on the corner it could have turned into a disaster you know like if if it hit a person so in a, in a crowded city you really have to learn how to do combo braking If you don't learn that, you're going to have problems. And the other thing you have to do is make sure that you adjust your perch on your rear foot brake to make sure that it matches up to your stance on the bike. Like if you're, you know, when you have your foot on the foot peg, you have to be able to reach that brake fairly easily. If you can't reach that brake, you're going to have problems with the rear braking at the time when you need it. You got to be able to quickly move your foot just to you know stop it and you don't want to be riding on that brake on that rear brake because you'll just destroy your rear rotor rear wheel rotor Fucking taxi, you know, all people is gonna fucking come over on me.
this XR, it's not bad. Breaking thing actually though really uh, was very hard for me to learn, and I'm sure it'd be for hard for most people because it's it's not part of your thought process. You know, when when something pops in front of you, what like what do you do? would not think to you don't think in an emergency situation to, to moderate your brakes it's very hard to do that you, it takes a while a long while to train yourself and then if you don't ride for a while you'll go you'll revert back again which I noticed also so I don't know the combo braking thing for me was really tough like it's almost like when you're rotating your arms in opposite directions it's, it's very hard to teach yourself do that. The combo braking actually will save you though, if a pedestrian steps in front of you or something like that, so you don't lose it. We do the combo braking and uh, moderate your rear brake as you start to hear, but all these things are really hard to do in a, in a severe emergency. When you, when you have the emergency stop, you just have to hope that, you know, you're moderating your brakes properly to be able to stop. And uh, when you squeeze that front and you're, what you hope for is that when you're squeezing the front and hit, hitting the rear, that you're, you're going to prevent from losing that front wheel. If you can stop from losing that front wheel, you're going to be all right. The front, the rear wheel will help you steady the bike. Like here, I'm, I'm smashing the front, but I'm also hitting the rear. As I slow down, you know. And then in an emergency situation, you apply both brakes at the same time. You'll find that the rear wheel will actually steady the bike. 
But the rear wheel does not have the kind of braking power anywhere near that the front does. You know, that's the one thing you have to remember. And if you get too comfortable with always using a rear brake, you know, which I developed a weird little habit, where, which I immediately broke because I realized the, uh, how dangerous it was. realized that, you know, I developed this bad habit that I immediately realized how dangerous and I stopped it. But I was getting in the habit of riding around Manhattan with just rear braking. For, just like a weird habit that I developed for a little bit. You definitely don't want to do that because the problem is the rear brake will not give you anywhere near the stopping power you need. It's just meant to stabilize the bike. And uh, trail braking will help you in turning. Obviously, sport bike riders know this. You know, they, they use trail braking to control the bike. It, help, it helps bring the bike under control. Like if you're going around a turn, you want to just tap that brake, you know, just feather on it to give the bike, uh, it'll, it'll try to bring the bike upright. But also, if you just tap on it and feather on it, it'll help you slow down and get the bike under control. I mean, I'm explaining all this, you know, so that people can ride more in New York, because what I see is, like, the fuel price is going up. Operating a car is becoming cost prohibitive, and now they've started. They're going to bring back on July 1st. Alternate side parking is coming back. All the things that I'm seeing, operating a car in New York is going to be cost prohibitive. In my neighborhood, they're, they're charging $800 to park a car now. <clears throat> because, you know, I guess they... I, I can't imagine that it costs them that much to, to operate the parking garage. But that's what they're charging. It's, it's actually scary, you know? And then the fuel cost, when I see people fueling up at gas stations, I mean, it's unreal. Like, this, this thing costs seven bucks to fuel up. But if you're driving around on a motorcycle and you end up hospitalized, that's not good either. You know, what, what, what cost benefit are you getting from that, you know? But I've learned to drive, you know, I've had accidents, but uh, over the years I've learned how to, how to really minimize my risk. And there's little tricks and things that you've learned. But lane splitting definitely saves you from getting hit from behind. And it gives you all the benefit of being on the bike, because why, why would you ride around New York City with all the risks of being hit, and all the risks involved, and then you're going to just ride around as though you're on, on a car that's, that's totally insane. I don't see any benefit to that at all.
that's how very to get to. That's why I had to take that little uh, detour there. Because I was coming from Upper Manhattan, Upper West Side. I'm trying to get over here. West Farms Road. This road is famous for these camper vans. I think it's the only area in New York we could actually park one of those. Yeah, when I stop, I'll show you guys how you should have your perch on the on the foot. But basically, your my brake, I adjusted it, and there's a the adjustment screw for the actual position of the brake, the foot. I did it on the KLR in this bike, but I adjusted the switch too that turns the the light on, and adjusted the actual position of the foot peg, the brake foot peg, not the. Uh, foot peg you put your foot on. I mean that you can't change unless you change foot pegs but <clears throat> on this bike I found the foot pegs to be fine, the stock ones. I mean they're a little bit small but they work pretty well for me. They destroy your shoes but that's fine. I'm not riding off road on this bike so it's pretty good for me. this thing don't fall over. Man, this is like a really steep uh, incline. Let me see. Wow. Nah, this thing's about to fall over. Oh, man, the kickstand's fucked up. <laughs> 